Hello the internet and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to unbox and test my new Lapsun microscope. It's a 4K microscope based on the Sony IMX337 sensor. Uh, I've purchased this microscope for my lab uh, to help me with um, SMD work and general inspection. This is an HDMI and USB 4K microscope. It's based on the Sony IMX337 sensor. Um, while I was browsing for a microscope, I found pretty difficult to choose the model I wanted. First of all, many suppliers don't really provide a great deal of information about their products. But most importantly, they're like a million different models and they all look the same across different manufacturers. So it, I found it really difficult to decide which one I wanted. I've decided to go with the vendor called Lapsun, which was kind of recommended by SDG Electronics, but obviously um, I take my responsibility here. I ended up purchasing directly, so not via eBay or Amazon. So, you know, kind of trusted them. Obviously this is through PayPal. So if this is not working or it's not what I asked, um, I should be covered and protected by PayPal. As you can see, I'm opening it with you. Uh, I haven't opened the box yet. So let's take a look. The kit came in a box, it's everything is nicely packed. Let's open them up and see what's inside. And this is what I purchased from Lapsun. So inside this box, I have the microscope itself, the sensor. I have to say, this is much smaller than I thought. Now the question is gonna be whether it actually features the sensor that I purchased. Here it is. It comes with a um, USB Type-C. There's a micro SD slot to the back, an HDMI output. There are some um, some sockets here. I think you can attach like a microphone, microphone stand, uh, like a camera stand or something, which could be helpful. And I guess we can probably see the sensor here. There you go, very small sensor. With the microscope, uh, we have a small power supply. It comes with an adapter. Oh, this is not a USB-C to USB-C, it's USB-A to USB-C. Not sure how much I want to use this power supply, to be honest, uh, especially considering it's a, it's a standard USB-A, and this is, it's, it's a two amp power supply, so I can use, to be honest, whatever, a good USB-A power supply. Uh, we have, oh, we have a remote control, and the USB-A to C cable. Now with the microscope, I purchased an LED ring light, and I also purchased a Barlow lens, uh, which should be the 0.3 Barlow lens. The Barlow lens allows you to increase the field of view, basically decreases the magnification. Yes, it's a zero, the 0 0.3, which I requested. And here is the lens itself. Now, when it comes to the lens, I would say one of the most popular that I could find on all the listings that I was checking while I was looking is the 180 magnification 180X. Uh, if I'm saying that right. Now, all the videos I watched online, the 180 is too much. Yes, it's, it's, it's very nice. You can see all the components full screen, but that's not what I want. But this is a 120 lens. The, the Microsoft was coming with, bundled with the 180 if I wanted at a kind of a lower price, but I decided to end up with the, to purchase the 120. Because again, I feel 120 is, is more than enough for inspection. All I wanted, I wanted to make sure that I could have that I could see, I don't want to see the whole board on the monitor, but I definitely want to see a decent amount of space, like, I don't know, 10 centimeters to do some, some actual soldering. And then I want to be able to zoom in when I need to do an inspection. Now, what I can say is the, the mechanism here for the, for the zoom, it feels really, really smooth. The lens feels really, really well done. It's pretty heavy. And, and this is a C-mount lens. So again, it can be used on different microscopes. It feels good quality, to be honest. Now, when it comes to the stand, again, I could purchase like an Andos, Andon Star style stand, but then I would have exactly the same problem, okay? If I want to inspect a larger board, uh, I, have, I have the same problem, I can't do it. Uh, I have several options. One option was to basically build my own, and I was thinking of getting like a monitor stand and maybe purchase one of these separately, because obviously this will give you fine adjustment. Well, the problem with that is, number one, the monitor stand is kind of bulky. Uh, you have to fix it somewhere. 
And also you have to create an attachment that, that would be a different type of stand, which I cannot put on screen right now. Um, I need to create probably 3D print an attachment to basically connect the monitor stand to the microsco microscope stand. And again, um, eventually by the time you buy this part on its own and then you buy the monitor stand and then you 3D print something and you work on some way to attach the monitor stand on the desk, basically it would end up with roughly the same price of buying this kind of stand. I eventually decided not to purchase the whole stand as uh, listed by Lapson. Um, I agreed for a small discount of 20 pounds to basically receive everything but the metal base. So let, let me show you what I have in mind for this. There we go. I should have a base. I didn't purchase the base. I saved 20 pounds on that, which is, I don't know, I guess it's almost $30. Uh, reason for that is the base was looked pretty bulky. And again, it ends up being basically having the same problem. So you end up with a fixed base. Is, is that gonna be long enough for the board you're inspecting? Is it gonna be too big? Then you always have this board around you. You can't, I don't know, yes, you, I guess you can unscrew this thing and put it away, but I just didn't like the idea. To be honest, I wanted to save the 20 pounds. Uh, this is a bit bigger than I was expecting, to be honest, but I think it's fine. So the idea is to attach this post to my desk somehow. I, I would like to clamp it because it's actually pretty nice. It comes with a screw at the bottom with an Allen bolt, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it looks like an eight millimeter one and uh, it feels, you know, it's going to be pretty easy to just create. Uh, I see if I can do something with a metal plate, but basically create a metal plate, attach this to the metal plate and then clamp the metal plate to the edge of any desk basically I want in any position, wherever I want. Let me say this that so far all this metal work it feels very well made the for example the the micros microscope holder here it moves very smoothly i mean it, it feels it's, it feels very nice uh, all the metal here all the metal work here all these poles they look pretty nice i don't have burrs or like any imperfection to be honest it, it feels very good quality and yeah and it, i think this is exactly what i want because it's pretty it's pretty long i will give you all the measurements later on when we're testing it and uh again i can basically when once it's attached to the side of the of the table i can basically move it away like this and it's out of the way you know now i need to find some sort of temporary way of attaching this so we can test this mi microscope together. So this is uh, the outcome. Uh, actually, being a temporary one, I really like it. I can tell you that this thing is very solid. I mean, I'm shaking the whole desk, but most importantly, it's, it, it has a very small footprint and I can move it wherever I want. I don't see why I need a massive metal heavy base that cannot be detached and you always have it, whether you are watching, inspecting something very small or something very large. Uh, remember when I said this feels really well done? So I put this together and I realized that uh, the adjustment here, this basically adjusts, it's basically to loosen this part so you can angle the microscope if, if, if needed. I realized that basically when I, when I tighten this, it clashes with the microscope uh, knob, adjustment knob here. And I was like, oh, come on, you know, how can I fix this one? And then I realized that the screw here is kind of protruding a little bit. It felt a little weird. And I realized that the, the whole handle here it's spring loaded. So if I pull the handle like this, I can turn it without turning the, the actual bolt, which is behind. So basically now this stops uh, turning here. So I can loosen it, adjust it and tighten it. And this is not in the way anymore. And it's, uh, it's time to assemble the, the lens with the sensor, with the actual microscope.
Okay, I guess it's time to uh, wire it and see see how it works, whether it works or not, and etc. Again, another little attention to detail from the manufacturer. These are basically the stops to basically hold the, uh, the, the LED light on the lens itself. And they come with rubber, rubber ends. So you don't damage the, the microscope lens itself and probably they, they grip much better than, than, than metal. Amazing. Actually, I didn't realize that the lens comes with some holes for the LED light. So amazing. That's another little uh, detail which I find amazing, to be honest. So let's take a closer look at this microscope. Let me explain, let me show you uh, the connections first. Currently, the microscope is connected via HDMI directly to the monitor, to my screen, and uh, to USB through to my laptop. The laptop is uh, giving, is basically powering the device, and uh, it's also seen the device under, well, I, I can see it under OBS, so I can, I can record straight from the microscope. And, uh, and the fact that I can power it from the laptop, it, it's, it's great. Now you can see under the connectors here, there's a micro SD card slot, which I don't think I'm gonna use for a number of reasons. Let me show you why. First of all, I'm not a fan of micro SD cards. They're very small. Well, I, yeah, I, mean, I appreciate why they need to exist, but uh, to work with micro SD cards, it's difficult because you can't write anything on it. But anyways, even if I wanted to use it, uh, this thing has, a, I would say, major design flow when it comes to this, cause I'll show you. When the card is in, it's completely flush with the chassis. And yeah, it's not great. You basically need nails or an item to take it out. So that is number one, which is not the end of the world, but number two, which is probably most important. Basically, if you are not careful, you can actually slide the SD card at an angle. And I'm assuming that it may actually fall inside the, the enclosure, inside the case, the metal case. And then you, you probably need to open the microscope to remove it. So to be honest, considering the fact that I can connect the microscope to OBS directly, I don't think I'm gonna use the SD card, uh, which uh, to be honest, it works. I tested it. You can take pictures or videos either through the keypad here or through the supplied remote control. One interesting thing of this microscope is that when it's connected to both OBS and the HDMI output, it actually outputs both video feeds simultaneously. I was told that that was not possible, but obviously it is. You can see obviously USB has a, has a little more delay than HDMI as, 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 as expected, to be honest. The delay on HDMI, I feel is, probably looks worse on camera than it is in person. It's definitely there. I'm not suggesting it's, it's not there. It, it's definitely, if, from my point of view, it's uh, acceptable. I can totally work with it. To be honest, I can probably work on the USB one. Uh, it's not seconds away, but it's definitely higher than the, than the HDMI output. Bear in mind, the HDMI output is 60 frames per second. The USB output, it's only 30 frames per second. I can see the camera on the menu has a 4K output available. I don't have a 4K monitor, so honestly, I don't know uh, how to test it. One advantage of this model against others I've seen is this one has a little keypad on top where you can uh, browse menus. Now, the, the menu is, is quite interesting. Uh, just be aware that it's not available when the microscope is connected to the, to the laptop. I guess that's probably a kind of a limitation of the hardware, so you have to power it from a power supply, which is not a big deal. Now, I don't really want to go through the menus. I mean, it's kind of self-explaining. It's pretty okay. You got, you got exposure correction, white balance. Um, on this model, you can set up and calibrate guidelines, which is quite interesting. I don't need it, but it's a, it's a feature that probably may be, may be interesting for someone. You can change the, the, uh, the language, obviously. The output can be full HD, 60 Hertz, or uh, Ultra HD, I think it's only 30 Hertz. Yes, Ultra HD 4K, only 30 Hertz. It's interesting that the white balance has a one push setting, which I don't know really what it means. There must be a way to basically set the white balance and then it doesn't change. So if you change your light or sometimes you have some boards which are completely blue or completely green and, and if it, it tricks the auto exposure a bit uh, to the point where everything becomes unwatchable. It's, it's definitely an interesting feature. I haven't found what, the, what to push, <laughs> where it says one push to fix the auto exposure, but I'm sure it's probably something that 
it's, it's somewhere within the firmware. Okay, time to show you the, mi the microscope in action. So um, this uh, ring here is to adjust the zoom, as you can see. And this is, uh, as I mentioned, is a 120, I think it's a 7 120X magnification. I'd like to show you the working area that you can achieve with this lens and this microscope. So this is a minimum magnification, as you can see. As you can see, we have about uh, 30, 35 millimeter, which is not bad. And that's the reason, that's the reason why I got the 120 lens, to be honest. Uh, right now, the LED ring is about 95 millimeter from the ruler. Actually, the LED ring protrudes a bit above the, the lens. So let me remove it a bit for a moment. But anyways, the height is 10.5 centimeter, which to be honest is fine. The, the LED ring, I have to admit, is pretty obvious, obviously it's pretty nice. It, it's quite small, but it's a bit invasive as in uh, it's always in the way. Um, so you may want to consider like a kind of a side light rather than this. This is pretty, uh, handy, it's always there, you don't have to move anything around, uh, but when you, when you need to do some soldering, probably something shining uh, from the side, it probably gives you uh, a bit of depth of field. And yes, uh, I just uh, I unintentionally left the white balance on one push, so if I change this to auto, as you can see, the white balance is immediately adjusted. If I'm zooming in at maximum magnification, and I adjust the zoom a bit, the focus a bit, all I can see on screen is about five millimeters. What I would like to point out, which you may, may have noticed, is that between maximum and minimum magnification, you do need to readjust the focus, but to be honest, the adjustment is minimum. As you can see, I barely moved the, the holder. So this is with maximum magnification, if I'm going down, sorry, minimum magnification, if I'm going down to maximum magnification, all I need to do is to move it like that. So we're talking about, I think it's about half a centimeter height difference. It would be nice if there was no need to adjust the focus. I tried adjusting this, um, this ring where it says 0.35x, but uh, no, I can't really adjust it. Again, it's very minimum, so minimal, so I don't need to adjust it too much. Now, when dealing with actual components, actual boards, you have to keep in mind that the, the depth of field changes between minimum and maximum magnification. I think, to be honest, that's a kind of unavo unav unavoidable effect, or at least on this price range. So this is minimum magnification. As you can see, uh, I can see the, the capacitor, the, BB, the, the PCB. I can also see, I can also read the top of this electrolytic capacitor, which is, I don't know, five millimeter from the board. It's a bit blurry. Obviously, you know, I can sharpen it, but I can still see the PCB, you know, it's not the end of the world. While if I'm going to maximum magnification on that capacitor, for example, that's the SMD capacitor, you can see that I can, I can't even focus the PCB and the top of the capacitor itself. So the, the depth of field is very, very reduced when you are a maximum magnification. To be honest, I've been using this magnification only for inspecting. When I'm inspecting, I'm okay, you know, um, playing with the focus so that I can, I can angle the board a little bit, you know, and, and inspect every single millimeter of my soldering joints or anything. But what matters, I feel, is that a minimum magnification, the depth of field is, is not bad and it's definitely much more forgiving. For this microscope, I purchased these 0.3 Barlow lens. The idea was, yes, I really don't need the, uh, the maximum magnification in this uh, microscope. I'm doing soldering, so I'd rather be able to see a wider section of my boards rather than, you know, yes, I, I can still remove it and, and inspect, but I thought, I thought that 0 0.3 would give me a good, a good compromise. Now, unfortunately, whenever I install this 0 0.3, I need, I need to raise the, micro, the microscope higher than its mass, maximum height. As you can see, it's still blurry. And, and this is the maximum height I can go with the microscope. Now, I can still, I can still move the, micros, the microscope so it points outside of my desk. I think it gets in focus around here. 
so we are talking something around 19, 19 to 20 centimeters of uh, working area and uh, we are approximately at 52 53 centimeters from the working piece now I got back in touch with the seller with Lapsun. Um, I was a bit, I'm a bit disappointed because I double, you know, I, I purchased the whole kit from them, and they didn't mention that this wouldn't work with the current stand. They didn't mention the the massive um, increase in height required for the 0.3. I have to say they've. Uh, kept talking to me. They offered basically to return the Barlow lens at my expenses, which I found unacceptable. They didn't bulge, they didn't change their position. They're basically happy out either to return the item, but I need to pay for the shipping, which is, as you may, it's not an expensive item. It totally doesn't make sense. Or they didn't offer any discount or any, anything basically. Again, I'm kind of disappointed. It's not what I was expecting. I'll leave it to you to draw a conclusion about this, but I have to say they did offer to uh, swap the Barlow lens with another one. Again, unfortunately, China is far away and it's not cheap to ship there. And it would probably, especially now with COVID, it would take a huge amount of time to get something in country. Uh, not to mention, obviously, you need to get another one back. Now, I have placed an order for a 0.75 Barlow lens because honestly, with now I have the microscope, I feel that the 35 millimeter are pretty okay. I think a 0.75 will give me a bit more and I can still zoom in, obviously, if I wanted. Uh, but most importantly, hopefully, it will raise the microscope, microscope a little bit and allow me to work a bit more comfortable on the board, even though, to be honest, 10 centimeters are very much acceptable. At this point, I would like to give you a demo with uh, uh, lift background music. So uh, feel free to watch it or to skip it. Uh, I just thought it would, uh, would be a good idea to actually have this little demo. I'm going to remove and reinstall this component here, which by the way, uh, fun fact, it looks like it was slightly misaligned from the factory, as you can see. It's quite interesting. I know that some of you may be asking, um, is it better to get uh, an optical stereo microscope rather than HDMI one? Is it weird to do soldering uh, using uh, looking at the screen rather than looking at your hands and the and the PCB you're working on? Now, my experience on microscopes is none. Uh, this is my first one, so you know, my please consider this when I'm. Uh, when listening to my opinion. All I can say is I've been testing this microscope on, on a scrap board, I've been removing components, doing some soldering, I actually done some soldering on an actual board that was trying to repair. I feel, I honestly feel comfortable using it. Um, it took me seconds to get used to it. Uh, the delay on the HDMI feed in particular, is, is, it's there, it's definitely there, but it's pretty low. Um, I, honestly, I got used to it within seconds, minutes. I don't feel I don't feel uncomfortable while doing it. So it, this is it. Um, I really like that I'm standing straight looking at the screen. Uh, I, but honestly, I never tried a stereo optical microscope, so I can't say. Uh, one other thing I can say is that within my budget, uh, I think the I don't want to say it's the was the only one, but definitely one candidate in terms of optical microscope was the um, Amscope, I think it's the 410 model. It's a very nice microscope, I, I don't doubt it. It's just that, it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was basically stuck on one level of magnification only. Uh, there were some optical parts that you could replace to get a higher or lower magnification, but from reviews I've seen online, including Louis Rossman's review basically some of those optical parts they simply don't work well they, they do they give you that magnification but uh, I think there were some issues in field of view or it looked like what looking through a pinhole uh, which was not very comfortable so the idea of spending more or less the same money to be honest to get something which was basically stuck on one level of magnification really didn't appeal to me now Maybe there are some other options on the market. I didn't look too much into that. All I can say is I am extremely happy with um, this item and working 
while looking at the screen, at least is not a problem for me. I assume this is very subjective, but this is my experience uh, so far, just I've been having, been using this for just a few days. Now, finally, to make this video a bit more interesting, I'd like to take a look inside the microscope. Um, I probably shouldn't, it's brand new, and again, I purchased it with my own money, so, you know, this is not something I would stand for free, this is my microscope. But uh, I've noticed the, there are like four Allen screws here, and um, there doesn't seem to be any warranty seal or anything, so let's take a look inside. Okay, so inside you can see there's a, there's a little module here, which is probably, well, probably it's where the sensor is. There's a little ribbon cable, which goes to a board here, which has a heat sink on top of the main chip. And you can see what I mean with the, I wanted to show you. So this is where the SD card is. So you can see what I mean, that there's a gap in between the SD card slot and the actual enclosure slot itself. So that's why I was able to basically just uh, push an SD card inside the enclosure without pushing it inside the, the SD card reader. Uh, that's a design fail for sure. I can see there is something here, something like, it's either a Y or an F, W 3609AAB6. And that will probably come handy in a second. I'll explain you why. Now, let me show you something interesting. So let me place an SD card inside the microscope. Probably I'm not gonna do that. Uh, number one, I see that when an SD card is inserted, the microscope, re microscope reboots, which is fair enough. I guess it's uh, kind of understandable. Now, now it is back. Uh, I think, yeah, I can select, you can probably barely see there's a little icon here. I can select whether it's video mode or picture mode. I think it's taking pictures now, or I can use the remote. Uh, there's a quite useful couple of buttons. One is for pictures and one is for videos. So let me take a picture of this. Then I'm going to remove the SD card, which will cause the micro microscope to reboot again. And I'm gonna plug the SD card in my laptop. Now, if I open the SD card on my computer, I'm assuming this number five must be the last picture that I've, uh, we've taken. Yes, indeed, this is the this is the picture of the, the board that we, we took. Now, if I check the resolution of this picture, it is telling me it's a 6,552 by 3,688. Now, if I'm doing the math here, it's gonna be 6552 times 3688, which turns out to be 24 million of pixels. Now, this seems, com seems like a picture coming from a 24 megapixel sensor, and I was sold this um, microscope as a 8 megapixel uh, featuring a Sony IMX377 sensor, which is, again, a 4K, uh, which is an 8 megapixel sensor. It's a bit concerning because um, I see on, on, I think it's on the labs and websites or eBay or even other manufacturers that, this, um, that there are microscopes coming with a kind of a generic 24 megapixel uh, Panasonic sometimes it says. And this again looks like a 24 megapixel, but there's more. If I scroll down on the camera model, it says 36098. And if you remember, uh, we found, we noticed on the PCB, it says, uh, I think it's YW, which is consistent with, consistent with Young Win, by the way, uh, YW3609A. Now, if I Google Young One microscopes, I end up on this website, and they do sell HDMI microscopes. And uh, if you look carefully, here we go, there's a, there's a 4K, YW3609A microscope available. And looking at the specifications, 
Indeed, it says 8 million pixels, which is consistent with a, with a 4K machine, obviously. Uh, there's no mention whatsoever of a Sony sensor in it. Uh, but what concerns me a bit is the pixel size. It says 2 by 2 micrometer. But if I'm looking at the Sony uh, IMX377 uh, data sheet, it says that the pixels are 1.55 micrometer. I know that usually when you get on these websites, whether it's eBay or AliExpress, or even the manufacturer itself, usually the information you find, it's kind of all over the place. So, you know, maybe, maybe there is a Sony sensor inside the machine, maybe not. Uh, I would say the most concerning part is the pictures coming out of the machine or the, mi or the microscope are actually 24 megapixel. And I kind of struggle to believe that the software is upscaling somehow this, this picture to a higher resolution. Uh, it is totally possible. Maybe they use this software for many other machines and, and they have a number of variety of sensors and maybe they kind of standardize everything to work with the highest definition, high resolution model. Who knows? All I know is it feels a bit unlikely that there is a Sony IMX377 in this microscope, to be honest. Let me make a quick clarification about the Sony 377 sensor. Only after finalizing this video, I realized that this is actually a 12.35 megapixel sensor. And uh, when outputting still images, the resolution of the images can be 4000 by 3000, 3000 pixels. This is because the 377 is actually a 4 by 3 aspect ratio sensor. So when used for still images, you can use the whole surface of the, of the, of the sensor and you can output 4000 by 3000 pixel pictures, which um, corresponds to a 12 megapixel picture. When it comes to outputting videos though, the sensor has to stick to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio standard, uh, which in 4K corresponds to 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels which makes an 8.2 megapixel stream. This doesn't change the fact that the microscope is outputting 24 megapixel pictures when the sensor is only capable of 12.35 megapixel. So the concern about what kind of sensor is inside these microscope is still valid. In terms of uh, video quality on the SD card itself, and you can see it's a full HD video at 60 frames per second. Uh, Windows here says it's a more or less a 16 megabit uh, bit rate. And if I play the video, this is a, a video I've taken the other day. I mean, you can, you know, the quality, to be honest, is the same you get from uh, from the HDMI. There's no, I don't, I don't see an issue with either here or the USB or the monitor itself. They, the quality seems to be consistent throughout all the all the outputs, to be honest. I purchased a Sony IMX377. This honestly doesn't look like a Sony IMX377. Am I disappointed? A little bit. Am I unhappy with this machine? No. I mean, this is great. I paid the whole kit, I think it's about £220, and that includes the, the stands. Everything we've seen on this review is £220. The picture, the, the image quality of this little microscope, from my point of view, again, this is my first one, is very very good. I can do HDMI and USB at the same time. It's been working pretty well. It's doing exactly what I want. What can I say? Again, I'm warning you that uh, it looks like the advert was misleading. I uh, had a, a very long pre-sale conversation with Lapsun. They were extremely helpful. They asked, uh, sorry, they answered all my questions. I'm happy with the process, I'm happy with the product. I would probably be cautious if I decided to go and purchase something uh, more expensive than, than this kind of, of machines. And again, apparently I'm not the first one here to report this kind of, let's call it misunderstanding, uh, of someone ordering some devices with a specific Sony sensor inside and then uh, they receive something completely different. But I am definitely happy the manufacturing quality is extremely uh, high but uh, this is it for now I hope you enjoyed the video and please do let me know if you have any comments any questions uh, more than happy to do tests for you and, and check things for you if you if I can help you with with your purchase or if you're just curious for now uh, thank you for watching have a great day and hopefully I'll see you soon